Hi friends, I found another pumpkin book. This is called Pumpkin Soup, written by Helen Cooper. And we only have one name here, Helen Cooper, so she's the author and the illustrator. Pumpkin Soup. It looks like that soup is hot because I can see steam coming off of it. This is the front of our book. Here's the back of our book. And here's the spine. We call that the spine of the book. Pumpkin soup. Let's get started. Here's our title page. Pumpkin soup. Deep in the woods, there's an old white cabin with pumpkins in the garden. There's a good smell of soup. And at night with luck, you might see a bag piping cat through the window and a squirrel with a banjo and a small singing duck. They live in the forest, in the woods. Pumpkin soup, the best you ever tasted. Made by the cat who slices up the pumpkin. Made by the squirrel who stirs in the water. Made by the duck who scoops up a pipkin of salt and tips in just enough. They're all working together to make that pumpkin soup. They slurp their soup. That's a funny word, slurp. Do you know what that means? To slurp something? If you're slurping your drink or you're slurping your soup, it's the sound that you make. They slurp their soup and play their song, then pop off to bed in a quilt stitched together by the cat, embroidered by the squirrel, and filled with fine feathers from the duck. And it's peaceful in the old white cabin. Everyone has his own job to do. Everyone is happy, or so it seems. Oh, they're all sleeping in bed. But one morning the duck woke up early. He tiptoed into the kitchen and smiled at the squirrel's special spoon. Wouldn't it be fine, he murmured, if I could be the head cook? He drew up the stool, hopped on top, and reached until his beak touched the tip of the spoon. Kerplunk! Down it clattered. Then the duck trotted back to the bedroom, held up the spoon and said, today it's my turn to stir the soup. He wants a turn to be the head cook. That's mine, squeaked the squirrel. Stirring is my job. Give that back. You're much too small, snapped the cat. We'll cook the way we have always cooked. But the duck held on tight until the squirrel tugged with all his might. And whoops, the spoon spun round through the air and bopped the cat on the head. Oh no. Then there was trouble, a horrible squabble, a row, a racket, a rumpus in the old white cabin. Look at the cat. The spoon hit the cat on the head. Now they're having a ruckus. It doesn't look like they're really getting along very much. There's trouble in the cabin. I'm not staying here, wailed the duck. You never let me help with anything. And he packed up a wheelbarrow, put on his hat, and waddled away. You'll be back, stormed the cat after we've cleaned up. And the squirrel shook his spoon in the air, but the duck didn't come back, not for breakfast, not even for lunch. I'll find him, scoffed the cat. He'll be hiding outside. I bet he's in the pumpkin patch. But the duck was not in the pumpkin patch. They could not find him anywhere. So they waited 
all that long afternoon. The cat watched the door. The squirrel paced the floor. That duck will be sorry when he comes home, they muttered. But the duck didn't come home, not even at soup time. Oh, they look sad on this page. I see some tears. Do you see the cat's face? Oh, the cat's very sad. The squirrel is sad too, I can see, because the squirrel has a tear. Let's see. The soup wasn't tasty. They'd made it too salty. They didn't feel hungry anyway. They both sobbed over supper and there were tears dripping into the soup and it made it even saltier. We should have let him stir the soup, sniffled the squirrel. He was only trying to help, wept the cat. Let's go out and look for him. They're gonna try again to find that little duck. The cat and the squirrel were scared as they wandered down the path in the dark woods. They feared for the duck all alone with the trees and the foxes and the wolves and the witches and the bears, but they couldn't find him. Then, let's see, on and on they trudged until they reached the edge of the steep, steep cliff. Maybe he fell down that, wailed the cat. I'll save him, squeaked the squirrel, and he scrambled down on a long, shaky rope. He searched all around on the ground, but he couldn't find the duck. Then the cat whispered in a sad little voice, duck might have found some better friends. He might, sighed the squirrel, friends who let him help. And the more they thought about it as they plotted back, the more they were sure they were right. This says, it was this soup made by duck famous, how does he do it? They got in thin, they come out fat. Looks like he has a little soup restaurant. But when they were almost home, they saw light shining from the old white cabin. It's duck, they shrieked as they burst through the door. And the duck was so happy to see them. He was also very hungry, and though it was late, they thought they would all make... Look at the picture. What do you think they're going to make? Some pumpkin soup. When the duck stirred, the cat and the squirrel didn't say a word. Not even when the duck stirred the soup so fast that it slopped right out of the pot. Not even when the pot got burnt. Then the duck showed the squirrel how to measure out the salt. And the soup was still the best you've ever tasted. So once again, it was, a, it was peaceful in the old white cabin. Until the duck said, I think I'll play some bagpipes. And there he is trying to play the bagpipes. That was a fun story about pumpkin soup. I've made pumpkin soup before. It's very delicious. I'll see you next time.